as I mentioned, chapter four of plasticity and structure of soil. And this is again, the list of our course objectives. And I have highlighted here how this relates to our main course objectives. So plasticity and soil structure, uh, specifically we're going to discuss uh, index properties. So actually in chapter two, we kind of touched on this topic, green size, green size distribution and green shapes, all those are index properties of soil. And they're important for coarse green soils. And then for fine green soils, um, index properties include the plasticity at the limits. So that's the focus of this chapter. And all these index properties are used to classify soils for engineering purposes. So that's how this chapter relates to our main course objectives. So in terms of what we, what we are going to discuss in, in this chapter, um, for today's lecture, so we're going to cover a couple items. The first one is the structure of cohesion list or coarse green soils. So we'll talk about soil structure and then introduce this packing and relative density concept. And also we're going to discuss structure of cohesive or fine green soil today. And specifically we're going to focus on uh, uh, clays, so cohesive soil. So we're going to focus on clays. And plasticity and adverb limits, that's really uh, the core of this chapter. And that's, I'm going to cover that on Wednesday. So Wednesday, we're going to go over plasticity and adverb limits. And there are actually a couple lab tests here. The liquid limit test and plastic limit test, they're all lab tests. So there, um, so TAs will go over this, I think the week after next week. So that will be your third lab test, adverb limits test. Okay, so that's the plan for um, today and the Wednesday. So let's start with this uh, structural soil per, um, uh, topic here. So I'll start with cohesion list soil here. And cohesion list, uh, as I mentioned, this is basic coarse green soils, gravels and sands. And there are two types of structures for cohesion list soils. And the first one is uh, shown here, this structure uh, in this structure, all particles are in contact with the, surround, uh, with the surrounding ones. And this is called a single green structure. So this is single green structure. Okay. So again, all particles in contact with the surrounding ones. And this picture shows an uh, example of uh, basically what the single green structure looks like. And there are two, on the left one is a loose packing. Uh, so you see the voids are relatively large. And on the right hand side, again, single green structure, but it's more densely packed. So this is the first type of structure in co cohesion is soil or coarse green soil. And this is uh, very typical for sands and gravels actually. So sands and gravels, most of them are single green uh, structures. And as shown on this figure uh, on this slide, the void ratios vary with density of packing. So it's uh, pretty uh, uh, straightforward to understand. So if you have loose packing, you have more voids. Okay, so that's the first type, single green structure. And the second type of structure in cohesion, cohesion soil is called, um, so this is, but honeycombed structure. Okay. So honeycombed structure is basically a structure where greens form a series of arches. And again, I have a slide showing what a honeycombed structure looks like. So you see, compare this to the previous single green ones so you see all these large voids and this series of arches. Okay. So for harming cone, the structure is from this figure visually, you can tell the honeycomb structure has high void ratios because you have those large voids, large holes uh, formed by these arches. And this is relatively rare compared to the first one, the previous one. As I mentioned, the first one, that's a typical of sand and gravels, and honeycomb structure is less common, so it's more rare. 
It's mainly in fine sands and suits settled slowly in water. So that's where you typically find honeycomb structure. And this type of structure can carry ordinary static load, but when you have shake or vibration like earthquake loading, uh, it tend to collapse. So that's the honeycomb, the second type of structure in cohesionist soil, uh, called honeycomb structure. Then I want to focus on that first type of structure. So the first type is single grain structure. So to understand what type of packing can we achieve for a single grain structure, uh, so first I'm going to show packing of uniform spheres. So this is more like a theoretical analysis. So let's say if your soils are composed of all uniform spheres, and in theory you can derive the densest and loosest state. So the Emax here, so this is a loosest state where you have the largest void ratio. And in, uh, for theoretical packing, for this uh, packing of uniform spheres, this max E void is 0.91, okay. So this is the loosest. So loosest state, of course, you have the highest void ratio. You have more voids. So these are so these are the bounds you can derive by knowing basically the uh, the the pack the the packing, and for natural soil of course it's not uniform spheres, so there is a range of different grain sizes in natural soil, and the result of that is it decreases the void ratio. Okay, so because you have a range of different sizes, so it's possible to have smaller grains filling these voids. So actually the effect of this is the void ratio decreases for natural soil compared to uniform spheres. And the second is we know natural soils, sands and gravels, they have irregular particle shapes and they is compared to uniforms because you have all these and irregular shapes. So the void ratio tends to increase for uh, irregular shaped particles. But the result of this is, so you have one effect decreases uh, E and you have another effect increases E. So the net result is actually E max and E mean for natural soil are close to those of uniform spheres. So the typical range of void ratio for cohesion in soil is actually 0.3 to 0.9. So that's the packing of cohesion is soil. So what I have discussed so far, these are bounds. So these are limits. So the minimum void, minimum void ratio, maximum void ratio. But for natural soil, just knowing the range is not sufficient. So just knowing the range of its void ratio is not sufficient to determine its proper engineering behavior. And for that purpose, introduce this concept here for coarse grain soil. So this is about relative density here. So first relative density indicates the in situ denseness of or looseness of ground. So it indicates where so packing seeds within its bounds. So it indicates the in situ denseness or looseness. And for coarse grain soil, so I highlight here Relative density actually is the single most important piece of information. So for coarse grain soil, if you know its relative density, you have a pretty good idea of what its proper engineering behavior, how strong it is, how compact. Let's say for a natural soil, we know it's E min and E max. Okay. Again, those are bounds, lower and upper bounds. And by, by the way, there are standard tests, ASTM standard tests to determine E min and the E max for a given soil. And then we call it in situ void ratio E. Okay. So let's call this distance from E to E max, this A. And the distance from E min to E max, let's call this B. So that's basically the range. So the relative density is basically tells you where soil is compared to its E mean and E max. So it's a ratio. 
So this dr. Okay. It's a ratio of these two parameters, a and b, we just define on this graph. And a, capital A, is e max minus e. And this e here, remember, this is in situ void ratio. And then B here is the range of void ratio for this particular soil. So it's E max minus E mean. And relative density typically expressed in percent, so times 100%. Okay. So that's the definition of relative density using void ratios. And again, Emax is the loosest state. And this is densest. So there are ASTM tests for Emax and Emin. So for a given material, there are standard tests you can determine its range of possible void ratios. Okay. So that's one definition of relative density. And there's another way to define relative density is actually to use dry unit weight. So we introduce this uh, dry unit, this is one of the six basic definitions. So we can use dry unit weight to define relative density as well. And for dry unit weight, so this is opposite for void ratio. The loosest state you have gamma D minimum, okay. Because at the loosest state, uh, the relative density, dry relative density is uh, the smallest. And then the maximum or the minimum void ratio corresponds to gamma D max. So that's the densest. And of course, the in situ one, we just use gamma D. So that corresponds to in situ void ratio. So we can also define relative density using gamma D. So relative density can also be defined as minimum over gamma D max minus gamma D minimum times times 100%. Okay. So this is another definition of uh, relative density. This is equivalent to the uh, first one where we are using uh, void ratio. So these two are equivalent. And you can derive this using the weight volume relationship we uh, introduced last chapter. Okay. So that's relative density definition. And for the loosest possible state, this is of course uh, just a bound. For the loosest possible state, your in situ void ratio is the same as the minimum void ratio. So dr, relative density is zero. And the densest possible state is where in situ void ratio I'm sorry, the, for loosest actually E equals to E max and for densest E equals to E minimum. So this is for densest. Okay. So that's the definition of relative density. Again, the void ratio one is perhaps more common, but you can also use dry unit weights to calculate relative densities. Okay, so that's dr. And this table here, this gives a more qualitative description of soil based on its relative density values. In place soils, in situ soils, seldom have relative densities less than 20 to 30%. And then compacting a soil to a relative density larger than 85% is pretty difficult. It requires a substantial amount of energy if you want to achieve that. Okay. 